There are four stress responses and they're probably keeping you stuck in life. So contrary to popular belief, flight or fight are not the only stress responses. There's actually four. This has been validated. This is fairly new research that I don't think is really in the like general public yet. Okay, so we got flight. That's, you know, like you run away from the stressor. What's interesting is that we can actually run away psychologically as well. So intellectual intellectualization is a form of running away from the stressor because we're like able to kind of like go into our mind palace and just like think about things. And that's like a way we run away. So we got flight, we got fight. That one's kind of self-explanatory. We want to like approach the problem. We want to con create conflict. Maybe we yell, maybe we erupt, whatever. So we got fight, flight, freeze. So freeze, you might think of like, you know, like a petrified um, animal freezing. But what happens with human is humans is that typically we become numb or we dissociate. So essentially that's kind of like feeling like maybe like I view myself like I'm like outside of myself or like life starts to feel a little bit unreal. Maybe some people have this like sensation where it's like, oh, I kind of feel like I'm in a movie and I'm not actually like living life. So that's a freeze response. You're essentially trying to kind of leave yourself to create a psychological separation to prevent yourself from feeling that pain. And then we have the newest uh, stress response that was most newly uh, found out by psychology researchers, and that is fawn. So fawn is essentially a stress response in which we, in which we caretake of others. And so what we do is we like completely don't focus on ourselves and we only focus on the needs of others. Typically the, when this happens in a stress response, it's almost like in an exaggerated way. Like we're kind of just like obsessed or like, are they okay? And our mind is always like focused on somebody else. Um, and this is thought to be like an evolutionary advantage to humans in which if there was a stressor in our population, it would be really helpful to have a certain amount of people in that fawn response, which it typically it does correlate more to being female. Um, so they, they're in that fawn response so that we can save the children. So the children, so somebody's kind of like really thinking about them if there's a major stressor. It's a theory. We don't know if it's true, but it makes a lot of sense. And so if you think about it, uh, these reactions to stressors make a lot of sense in the evolutionary context. If we have a group of humans and they're all reacting in different ways in these four responses, the flight, fight, freeze, and fawn, we're probably gonna save the most amount of humans if we have a diverse reaction in the group. So some people are gonna fight, maybe that works. Some people are gonna flee, maybe that works. Some people are gonna freeze, like, you know, just maybe like hide, maybe that works. And some people are gonna fawn, they're gonna take care of the children so we can save some of the children, we can keep the race going. It makes so much sense, it's actually genius. The problem is, is that nowadays, these are not that helpful to us, right? And nowadays we're creating all of these like stressors in our minds. Like we see danger everywhere. Like there's danger to us everywhere. Like I'm gonna be late for the meeting. I'm gonna potentially get fired. My partner might break up with me. Like there's, there's all these dangers. And yeah, some of them are real, but a lot of them are self-created. And so we've created a dangerous environment in our mind and we're essentially like triggering ourselves into the fight, flight, freeze, fawn response. And then we feel very stuck because the reason we feel stuck is because these responses were made to be short-term adaptations. They're not like horrible things that are happening to you. They're actually very smart, but they're short-term adaptations. And so what happens is that you only benefit from them in the short term. And if your stressor isn't a true stressor, but like a psychologically created one, then it's not really helpful to you. So essentially you create the stressor in your mind, then you have the short-term stress response, and then again and again and again, it cycles, right? And so that's essentially the sensation of feeling stuck. You're cycling through something that you can't quite get out of. And so the kind of solution to this is to train yourself to not perceive as much danger.
And this is very much possible. Like what we know is that when somebody is kind of used to these negative automatic thoughts, used to perceiving a lot of danger in the environment, they can be trained out of it. And once you don't have those like danger perception thoughts, then you won't go into the stress response. And then that way you'll be able to engage kind of more in long-term creative strategic thinking that will benefit you in the long term. But in order to trigger that long-term thinking, we need to actually create safety in the mind and the problem I'm seeing these days um, especially in my practice especially I mean like everyone has this is that we're so good at creating danger in our minds like we're so good at seeing all of the scarcity around us um, like you know like I'm not enough we're not doing enough this isn't enough and I mean it makes a lot of sense it's kind of the culture we live in like maybe we wouldn't really be able to sell anything in a capitalist economy if people didn't feel like enough but that creates a danger in our mind because essentially the not enough thought equals scarcity. Scarcity equals stress, always in the human mind. We were never designed to know whether the thing that we're feeling scarcity about is actually important. We can actually apply the scarcity thinking to anything. And you saw this during the pandemic with the toilet paper. Like it doesn't matter if you have toilet paper. When I grew up, where I grew up, I never had toilet paper. You don't need toilet paper, you guys. <laughs> but we were all so stressed about it, right? We were so stressed about it and people's stress responses were activating. And so you can apply this thinking to literally anything and that's why you need to train yourself out of it. You need to train yourself into creating safety in your mind and then you can do strategic thinking. Then you can take those really interesting risks in your life that create the maximal growth. And if this is something that you're hoping to work on, because I'm gonna be honest with you, it's, it's hard to do on your own. Like it's totally possible, but it is hard. Like just think about how many years you spent in this type of scarcity mindset. And it's, it's gonna take some work to get out of it, right? It makes sense. And so if this is something you're hoping to work on, um, schedule an intro session with me. I got a link in my bio, we can talk about it. And um, if not, this is really the work of a lifetime, create safety in your own mind, and then you can think in a more optimal way. You don't have to always be in that short-term thinking that is only really benefiting you in the present but not really benefiting you at all because there's actually no real danger. Focus on creating safety. That's how you develop strategic thinking, creative thinking, long-term thinking, all of the things we want.